In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve a problem associated with carbon-14 dating. So we have a living tree that has a carbon-14 decay rate of 13.6 counts per minute per gram. An old dried piece of wood from the same type of tree has a decay rate of 3.4 counts per minute per gram. Estimate the age of the old piece of wood. Now first, let's understand the problem. Why are the decay rates different in the living tree and in the dry piece of wood? Let's draw a picture to understand what's happening. So let's say this is the living tree and this is the dry piece of wood. Now the living tree is constantly absorbing carbon dioxide from the air. As a result, some of these carbon atoms will be carbon-14. And so the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 in the living tree will be constant. And so its decay rate will be constant. Now, for the dried piece of wood that's no longer attached to a living tree, it's not absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere anymore. And so the carbon-14 in this piece of wood decreases over time. Carbon-14 naturally decays through uh, beta decay. So it emits a beta particle, which is basically an electron, and as a result, it converts into nitrogen-14. And so, if a tree or a piece of wood is not absorbing carbon dioxide from the air, the carbon-14 count inside that wood decreases. And so the decay rate will decrease over time. And so that's how you can tell how old this piece of wood is after um, it, it died or after it's stopped absorbing CO2 from the atmosphere. Now the carbon-14 in the atmosphere is constant. And so for a living tree, as long as it consumes CO2, the amount of carbon-14 in the living tree will be constant. So in the upper atmosphere, nitrogen-14 interacts with neutrons in space. This is in high in the upper atmosphere. And as a result, it creates carbon-14 and hydrogen, or a proton. Now, carbon-14 undergoes beta decay to produce nitrogen-14. So notice that the amount of nitrogen-14 in the atmosphere is constant. In the upper atmosphere, nitrogen-14 is being consumed, and then it's later produced by beta decay. Now the concentration of carbon-14 is also constant. It's being produced in the upper atmosphere, but it's being consumed later. The net effect is that a neutron is converted into an electron and a proton, or the nucleus of a hydrogen atom. But what you need to understand is that the amount of carbon-14 in the Earth is relatively constant, or in the atmosphere. So now let's focus on this problem. A living tree has a carbon-14 decay rate of 13.6 counts per minute per gram, and the dried piece of wood has a decay rate of 3.4 counts per minute per gram. How can we estimate the age of the old piece of wood? Well, first, we need to calculate the rate constant k. We're given the half-life of carbon-14. And so k is going to be the natural log of 2 divided by the half-life. So it's ln2 divided by 5,730 years. So let's see what this is equal to. And that's going to be 1.2, 1 times 10 to negative 4 years to the minus 1. So that's the rate constant k. Now, we need to use this formula to calculate t. 
this is an n final over n initial and this is equal to negative kt now in this equation what is the value of n initial and n final n initial represents the initial amount in grams it could be in moles or it could be the initial amount of radiation and final is the final amount of the radiation so for the old piece of wood at one point it was living and at that point the initial amount of radiation is 13.6 counts per minute per gram that it was emitted at the present the final amount of radiation is 3.4 and so we have everything that we need in order to calculate the time or the age of the old piece of wood. So let's plug in everything into this formula. And we have K already. So let's calculate T. The natural log of 3.4 divided by 13.6, that's negative 1.3863. And then if you divide that number by negative 1.21 times 10 to the minus 4, T is 11,457 years, approximately, since I rounded these values. So this is how long the wood has been dead. Now let's say if the wood was alive in a tree for 4,000 years. What do you think the age of the tree is? The age should be the sum of these two values. So let me illustrate this with a timeline. So let's say at zero, the tree was a plant. It started to grow, and it's been alive for 4,000 years. So the amount of carbon-14 or rather, the radiation emitted as a result of carbon-14 decaying is 13.6 while the tree is living. Because it's constantly absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Now, once the tree dies, the decay rate will decrease. This is going to be 15,457. And so by this time, the decay rate is going to be 3.4. So while the tree is dead, the carbon-14 count decreases. And so this technique measures how long the tree has been dead for, which is 11,457 years. So if you know how old or how long the tree has been living, then you can truly calculate the age of the tree from when it was born, so to speak. Now there's another way in which you can get the same answer. That is the time that the tree has been dead, 11,457 years. At least you can estimate it. So initially, the radiation was 13.6 counts. Now, it's going to take 5,700 years, or 5,730 years, for the radiation to decrease by half. So 13.6 times 0.5 is 6.8. And it's going to take another 5,730 years to decrease by another half, which is 3.4. So the total time is 5730 plus another 5730. So it's going to take 11,460 years for the radiation to go from 13.6 to 3.4. And so the answer that we got, which was 11,457, that was a rounded answer because K was a rounded answer. But this answer is more exact. So the tree has been dead for or the piece of wood has been dead for 11,460 years. Now, let's move on to part B. How many counts per minute per gram will be measured if the wood was 18,000 years old? So if we use the same type of technique, if we add another 5730 years, this would be half of its present value, that's 1.7. 
And 5730 times 3 is 17,190 years, which is less than 18,000. So if we do it again, half of 1.7 is 0.85. And so 5730 times 4 is 22,920. So the answer is somewhere between 1.7 and 0.85. Now 18,000 is closer to this number than it is to that number. So the answer should be just under 1.7. Probably more than 1, but less than 1.7, but close to this number. So let's use the equations to get that answer. Now we said the rate constant k was the natural log of 2 divided by 5730. And we rounded it to 1.21. I'm going to leave it as 1.2097 times 10 to the minus 4. So now, we need to calculate n final this time. n initial is still going to be 13.6. t is 18,000 years. So we're going to start with this equation. But we need to rearrange it. The base of natural log is e. e raised to the stuff on the right side is equal to the stuff on the inside. So n final divided by n initial is equal to e raised to the negative kt. And then if we multiply both sides by n initial, we can get this equation. So the final amount is equal to the initial amount times e raised to the negative kt. So this is the formula you need to answer the second part of the problem. So let's go ahead and finish it. n initial we said is 13.6 and k is 1.2097 times 10 to the minus 4 and then we're going to multiply this number by 18,000 and I'm running out of space So the final amount is 1.54. So that's how many counts per minute per gram this particular wood would have if it's 18,000 years old. And we said it's going to be between 1.7 and 0.85, but closer to 1.7, since 18,000 was closer to 17,090, or was it 190? 17,190. So this is the final answer to the second part of the problem. And that's it for this video. Thanks again for watching.